Hi, in this presentation I'll talk about rigid orientation preserving linear transformations in R3. So here we're assuming that A is a transformation of R3 and it's linear, or at least it sends 0 to 0, it's orientation preserving and rigid. And then the theorem is, then A is a rotation, R theta U, for some theta and U. And when we write R theta U, the U's in the subscript, this means a rotation around the axis U uh, passing passing through the origin. So we're talking about the line through the origin in the direction of the non-zero vector u. And we're rotating around that line. So we're going to first prove a lemma here, and then we'll prove the theorem. So the lemma is, suppose a of u is equal to u, for some u on the unit circle, for some u such that the length of u is 1. So u lies on the unit sphere, I should say, around the origin. Okay, then A is a rotation R theta u for some theta. And the proof, I'm going to be a, a pretty intuitive here, is basically theorem one from the previous lecture about rigid orientation preserving transformations of R2. So we take the unit sphere. Here's the center, is the origin. There's some point U on the unit sphere, and we're assuming that A of U equals U. And we're going to take the plane through the origin perpendicular to U. So if that's going to intersect the sphere at some great circle about like this. And here, this great circle lies in the plane P uh, perpendicular to U. So in particular, P is the set of X such that X dot U equals zero. And by rigidity and orientation preserving, we have that A induces a rigid orientation preserving transformation of P to itself. So in particular, by the previous theorem, in the previous talk, um, A is a rotation on P around the origin. So A is inducing some sort of rotation through angle theta of plane P. And this then, thus, again by rigidity and orientation preserving, A is equal to R theta U. And by that I mean in R3. Because we know that it holds u fixed, and we know it does this rotation on p, holding the origin fixed, and so therefore it's rotating all of R3 along with the plane. So that proves the dilemma.
So now let's prove the theorem. To prove the theorem, we first note the following, that if a of z equals minus z, for all z on the unit sphere around the origin, that is to say for all z such that the magnitude of z equals 1, then a is not orientation preserving. And the reason for this is that if we mapped every z to negative z, we'd be mapping every z to the point opposite on the unit sphere, and that would be turning the unit sphere inside out. It would map the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis, the positive y-axis to the negative y-axis, the positive z-axis to the negative z-axis, and that would mean that the sphere is turned inside out, we destroy destroyed the right hand in this property of the x, y, z axes, and thus A would not be orientation preserving. So, in this case, so pick some z such that A of z is not equal to minus z. Now, if A of z is z, we're done by the lemma. We use the lemma with u equals z. So we're assuming that A, is, A of z is not equal to z, nor is it antipodal to z, nor is it on the opposite side of the sphere from z. So let's draw the unit sphere. This is the sphere of radius 1 centered at the origin. Someplace on the surface of the sphere, there's the point z. And let's let v equal a of z, and let's let w equal a of v. So our picture is here's z, here's v, here's the great circle connecting, or a portion of the great circle connecting z and v, here's w, here's the portion of the great circle connecting v and w, they make some angle theta here, and so what I mean here, so these are the, these are the great circles joining z and v, and joining v and w. So what I mean by a great circle is this, it's the shortest path along the sphere. We obtain a great circle by taking a plane and through the origin and intersecting it with the sphere. So it's like it's the shortest path along the surface of the sphere where it intersects the sphere. And we know that this distance from, we know that v is not on the opposite side of the sphere from z, so this distance from z to v is less than 180 degrees around the sphere. And likewise, from v to w is the same distance by, by, by rigidity, so it's also less than 180 degrees. We've picked the direction to be less than 180 degrees. And now we have several cases. So the first case, case A, is where w equals z. So what that means here is that, although I drew the picture with w separate, it actually means that the segment, the circle segment from z to v, has been mapped back to the same segment from v back to z. So in this case, a of m1, where m1 is the midpoint of the great circle from z to v, is mapped to itself. It basically swung that arc of the great circle around itself 180 degrees. Let's give also a name to the midpoint of the other great circle. I can call it m2. And then that's equal to, in fact, m2. So this means that, so by the lemma, A is R pi M1. Well, the lemma said it was some angle theta, but in fact you can see that it's pi. So in this case, it's a rotation of the type that we want to have with 
theta equal pi and u equal m1. For case b is where w is not equal to z. And here we don't have any sort of notion of translation like we had in the previous proof because the origin is fixed. So let's draw the perpendicular great circles. So perpendicular to this great circle joining z and v, there's another great circle at joining it at right angles. And I'll call this great circle C1. And perpendicular to this great circle, there's a great circle, which I'll call C2. It goes all the way around the circle. The short, we think of the upper direction here and here, from M1 and from M2. And by rigidity, these two circles, the circle C1 is mapped to the circle C2. So let C1 and C2 be the perpendicular great circles bisecting the first two great circles. So we now have by rigidity, we take, they have to intersect someplace. Any two great circles intersect at two places. There's a place here and they intersect on the other side as well. They intersect at some point U. Let U be the intersection of C1 and C2 as shown. Actually, it doesn't matter which intersection we use. Then we have by the rigidity and the orientation preserving, uh, C1 is mapped to C2, and in fact, this upper part of C1 coming rightward from the leftward from the segment from Z to V is mapped to the upper part of C2. And so then we have the A of U equals U. So now the lemma applies again. And the theorem is proved. The lemma says that we have a fixed point u, so then a has the form r theta u. So that proves the theorem. And just as in R2 we argued the fact that this means that likewise in R3, every rigid orientation preserving map can be formed as a composition of translations and of rotations of the form r theta u for some axis u passing through the origin. Just want to end with one final comment here about what if A is rigid and orientation preserving but maybe it doesn't preserve the origin, but a of zero is not equal to zero. There is a whole other type of rotation that exists here that I haven't talked about. The other types of such maps, there's things, they're known as glide rotations, or sometimes called screw motions, because it's like the action of a screw when you're turning a screw. Um, a glide rotation is the following. We've got the origin here. We've got some vector, some line L, and we think of U as being the direction of the, of the rotation axis. So U is the rotation axis. And we've also got some translation value, uh, which I can call T. And we've got some T is a translation value, or translation rate, and it's parallel to U. And the glide rotation does the following. I should, we also have a, a rate of rotation, theta. And a glide rotation, we can think of doing the following. It's rotating around the axis U at angle theta, maybe theta radians per second, 
and at the same time it's moving linearly along the axis u at a rate t, or distance t per, per second. So glide rotation has simultaneous rotation around L, around the line containing U, rooted at some point, not at the origin, and translation along L. And so the theorem is that every rigid orientation preserving map of R3 is a glide rotation. So that's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.